Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Not made up by Disney or Con Lucasfilm. Whichever way you slice it, Legends. We're back to the Filoni verse. That's what I'm dubbing it in this small era, the small era we have of TCW related material and the show itself. Um,. We just got done with Wild Space. Um, well, for you, I just got done with that. For me, it's been a little bit. Christmas and everything happened, you know, the New Year's. My mother got COVID. Um, <laughs> but but I'm still negative, so I'm still going to work until such a time that I don't. But my birthday is January 9th, so I would prefer that not happening prior to um, that. But anyway, I've been suffering for your viewing pleasure because I'm trying as best I can to do everything in chronological order. Everything. That includes the video games and the shows, even Filoni's shows. However, that does also call for some skipping. I skip certain things that I either feel are too stupid or irrelevant, um, from my memory at least, because I did watch this show when I was younger. Uh, so trying to navigate that is a lot, but we have, I think we start with, uh, we start with, uh, the web comics of, um, the Clone Wars, which were just like a bunch of little short stories that took place in between episodes of season one, specifically of the Clone Wars. Uh, with varying art styles all mostly being bad. Uh, but we have the first one being Departure. I have nothing to say about it, only that it would come, come next. And then you go to Season 1, Episode 8, Bomb Bad Jedi. Jar Jar is stupid. Um, but that's nothing new. Um, I mean, Le uh, not Leia, uh... Padme gets to do some cool things in here, which is nice, but she doesn't, um, the concept itself, I think it's fine, but of course the separatists are played as stereotypical bad guys, which doesn't make it as nuanced as it could be, plus you have Jar Jar running around doing stuff, so not the best episode of the Clone Wars. Uh, the next photo comic is Transfer. Again, nothing to add about this short story. Just explains why in the beginning of the next episode, season one, episode nine of the Clone Wars TV show, Cloak of Darkness, Ahsoka Tano is with uh, Beres, not Beres, uh, with uh, Luminara, Luminaria, Beres, uh, oh, whatever the fudge her name is, the the master to Beres, um. That's that. Um, there's also Head Games, a short comic uh, at some point. Um, we have another photo comic called um, The Dreams of Grievous. This um, basically connects the visionary comic in a way with I mean, at least what we know of Grievous's backstory which kind of comes from that comic and it's reiterated here it just looks awful and that leads us into the Lair of Grievous episode this episode is actually decent because Grievous is actually a threat that's another thing with uh, Cloak of Darkness uh Grievous is there, he even fights Ahsoka Tano, which is really stupid. Um, now she does lose, I don't want to make it seem like they made her just like... I mean, she can be a Mary Sue, but she's not a Mary Sue here. She does get beat, she doesn't die, because of course this is a kid's show. Um, and we're not going to have the main characters die, it's just not going to happen. You can have random clones die, you can have bad guys die, but you can't have the main character die. Because it's for kids. Um, now that doesn't apply to every kid show. I know there's kid shows where main characters die. I'm just saying 
general rule of thumb for kids shows, you don't kill off the main characters. So, you know, she does get beat by Grievous, though. I want to stress that she did not win that fight. It's just still annoying that she was even in the situation to begin with. Um, but Lair of Grievous, Kid Fisto, some Padawan we never knew about before that he apparently had, a Mon, Calamari, Mon Calamari, Calamari guy, my goodness. Um, they go, they go find Grievous's lair, and all the clones there, or at least most of them, die. Uh, the Padawan dies. Kid Fisto fights Grievous, but does not beat Grievous, he runs away. So that's another win for Grievous, so he... Even though still, why? At least Grievous in these early stages is not being a complete and utter buffoon. That's later, though. Um, we have Season 1, Episode 13, Jedi Crash. I The Jedi Crash land, and Anakin's out of the picture for a good portion of it, and... Um, and they meet these, like, native people there. It's okay. Only thing I really had to add here, I don't really have many, like, notes or anything for you guys. The only, I, I could see the disinterest in my voice, probably, or hear it. Um, but Ayla's inconsistent. I mean, because, of course, it's Filoni Clone Wars, and half the time they never get anything right. Uh, sometimes they, they do do good good stuff, but um, Ayla is inconsistent. She's telling, you know, um, Ahsoka why she needs to not worry about, worry about stuff, why attachment is bad, even though at this point in the Clone Wars she would be in a relationship with Kit Fisto, and she has a deep and personal relationship with, um, pl platonic though, but relationship with um, Quinlan Voss. But, of course, she's not acting like that here. Um, of course, the, uh, maybe she's putting on a front because, you know, those are deep, dark secrets. Just like Anakin kind of hides the fact that he has a wife. I can get that, maybe. I mean, obviously, you probably wouldn't, like, go advertising that you're dating Kit Fisto. But, I don't know, she, the way she talked just seemed inconsistent with what we know of Ayla Secura. At least Legends Clone Wars-wise. If this is canon, if you're talking about the Disney canon... Then it doesn't matter because none of the Legends books happened. So it, it, probably not cons inconsistent at all. Because there's probably not a lot of comics focused on Ayla Secura in um, canon. I mean, I could be wrong about that. but So that, that was a bit annoying. Photocomic Neighbors. This is like in between the Jedi Crash episode or in between the next episode, Defenders of Peace. Um, but basically it's just the natives talking to Ayla about how there was a more violent race on their planet and then they left at some point, I guess. Um, this, this whole Jedi crash and Defender of the Peace thing, I get what it's trying to say. It's just, I, I don't know, it's just, oh, we can't fight, fighting is wrong, but sometimes you have to fight. Edge of the, huh. End of the moral lesson. The Gandhi's way doesn't always work, you know? And it's okay. It's a, it's a okay episode. There's nothing wrong with it. It's probably one of the better episodes of the Clone Wars. But there's nothing phenomenal about it either. The photocomic Cold Snap. This one actually looks decent. Reminds me of the Yoda one-shot we got. Or uh, even the Visionaries that I just mentioned. The story of Grievous. Arch decent, kind of a horror little novel, short or little short comic where some clones meet a terrible end. Then we get to season one, episode fifteen, Trespass. The one interesting thing of note here is that in episode three, there were these blue people, um, played by George Lucas and his daughter. I believe I could be wrong about that, but I know George Lucas was there, and we get to see like their home planet and stuff, and that's kind of neat. But it's, it's destroyed because the whole thing is that the military of the blue people are... I mean, there's this one general guy or whatever the fudge he is. And he's, he's super racist, super, you know, just full of himself. And no, we have, to, we have to attack. We have to attack because that's what we have to do. 
Meanwhile, you have the the ones who were kind of scary in the comic I just mentioned. They're they're really nice. And here, they're like, we just want peace. We don't want to keep fighting. We just want you out of our territory. Um, and they even tell this general guy this. And he's like, no, we're going to war! War! And it's like, I don't know. It's not... I know this is meant for kids, but I don't think writers often give kids enough credit. I think kids can be given much more nuanced stories. Um, and be able to comprehend them. I don't feel... Um, that this did a good job portraying what it's trying to portray. I mean, I get it. It's just really heavy handed. Um, and I don't know. I just didn't really care for the episode. Then we have the next photo comic, um, Covetous. Um, this goes right before, uh, episode 19. But... All right, because I skipped over the blue shadow virus because I don't care. I don't care. You want to include in your timeline? Go ahead. It, I don't care. I skipped it because I was getting bored of season one. So I moved on to the last big arc of season one. Sue me. Um, but Storm over Ryloth. Um, this one's okay. It's a space battle. We got Ahsoka. We got Anakin. We got this uh, Trade Federation guy, Nimodian. And it's it's okay. Ahsoka learns a lesson. It's it's all right. Um, next photo comic is Curfew. The art is awful, but it would take place here. And then we have Innocence of Ryloth. I actually quite enjoyed this one. Uh, the, a good section of the episode focuses on these two clones who are scouting around. They find this little Twi'lek girl. And there's just a lot of sweet little moments between the clones and the little girl. Um, so I, I actually liked this episode quite a bit. Um, then we get to the photocomic, The Ballad of Cham Sindola, who is going to be the rebel leader of, of Ryloth specifically, not of the rebels of the original movies. Um... And some guy singing a song about him, I guess. It's it's fine, I guess. It's not bad, not good. It just exists. Uh, and then we get to Liberty of Ryloth. Ryloth is freed from everything. And it's a typical Clone Wars episode. Then we get to the Clone Wars comic. One one-shot comic. Crash Course. Uh, Anakin and Ahsoka have to go to this planet. Um, and there's pod racing there. Uh, but this time Ahsoka must become the new pod racer. Because Anakin is kind of a well-known name among the pod racing community. So he to not get recognized, he doesn't... Because um, they're trying to catch a spy. Or whatever. Uh, and that whole comic was okay. It was It was a decent little comic. I have nothing really to add on that. The next comic we have is actually from the Clone Wars TCW uh, comic book run, which had a couple issues. We go to issues 7 to 9 here, where we have the storyline in service of the Republic. This focuses on Kit Fisto and Plow Koon. Um, I don't really have anything to add here. It's just cool to have a story with them uh, revolved around in the story. Ignore any time discussion here. If you're following my timeline, we are three years into the war of the Clone Wars. We're in the final stretch. We're still in kind of the early months. Four months to three months is where I'm kind of cramming all this stuff in. That's where we're at right now. Um, and so you just got to kind of accept that with me. The Clone Wars is a jumbled mess if you're including Filoni's Clone Wars. So you just have to stick with me here. Uh, but of course it says this is a year after the Clone Wars. If you want to put this comic earlier, feel free to do that. I'm going to ignore that, and I'm going to place that here. Um, but it's it's a pretty decent three-comic run. Nothing special. Nothing you'll remember after reading it. But the art is decent, and it's, it's, it's pretty fun to read. Just nothing that you'll remember a day after the fact. Then we get to Season 2 of The Clone Wars. Uh, season 2, Episode 1 episode two and episode three we have holocron heist this one's pretty decent because it shows uh cad bane's skills as an assassin 
or as a bounty hunter. And, you know, he doesn't easily get out of his situation, but he does manage to outsmart the Jedi, which, you know, when you have a really smart character is always cool. Cargo of Doom is a more stereotypical episode of the Clone Wars, but there's also good moments in there with Cad Bane, because Cad Bane is the best part of these episodes. In Episode 3, Children of the Force, the main plot I'm not even going to discuss with you because I think it's stupid. The idea that um, Sidious wants to, like, get a bunch of Jedi children, especially this early. Like, I, I understand having, like, Emperor's hands and stuff, like, you know, once he's successfully completed his mission of killing all the Jedi and bringing in the Empire, but the idea of doing that right now and just, or, or of just hiding babies away just feels a bit weird and calls too much attention to yourself. Like, why? Um, but I will say the redeeming qualities of this episode is that one scene where um, Mace Windu, um, Anakin, and Obi-Wan all go into the interrogation room and start trying to ply the information from Cad Bane because one Jedi is enough. He can fight the Jedi mind trick because, you know, he's resilient like that. But even with three Jedi, he still says no, which I just thought was a really cool moment for Cad Bane. And um, then there was another scene just with Anakin and uh, Palpatine talking. And the way the shot was, you know, like, lit lighting in, the, in it the thing they weren't having like a huge philosophical discussion or anything but it was a nice little moment that i like from the episode other than that nothing amazing here's things that i absolutely i tried for like at least a half hour trying to find it online somewhere but i can't uh i found something that requires uh adobe flash and that's for some reason not working but this is another web comics. We got Act on Instinct and the Verisidian Operation. These were web comic exclusives, like they only came out uh, on the Star Wars website. Um, and they're they're focusing on a new Jedi we haven't heard of during the Clone Wars. Matt Wilkins has a video talking about it because he printed all those out. Um, but I did not because I didn't become a fan of the expanded universe until it was too late. So. If you can find them, they would go chronologically here. However, um, it's it's not uh, it's not working at the moment for me. So, but that's where it goes. Lastly, we have season two, episode seventeen, bounty hunters. This is where Hondo Onaka is the least annoying and the most threatening ever. Uh, the one weird thing is that they land on Felucia, which they were literally just at in the last arc with uh, Cad Bane. That's where they started. Uh, but they land here. They crash land. They need to get off. They help some of these farmers and these bounty hunters that have been hired by the farmers to uh, stop these pirates. Who was being led by Hondo Onaka. And he's actually a pretty decent villain within this episode. Other than that, pretty alright. Anyway, I just went through episode upon episode upon comic, torturing myself through the Filoni-verse to entertain all of you so I could say that I've gone through the entire EU in chronological order as best I know how. <laughs> Up next, we have Republic Commando Triple Zero by Karen Travis. Now, here's the thing about this book, guys. Here's the scary thing. Everybody I know on the internet has not spoken positively about these books, yet they're also very popular. What am I going to think about this book? Well, you have to stick around to find out. Subscribe so you can watch that next video when it comes out. Until next time, guys. May the Force be with you. Oh. And even though this is probably going to be uploaded months after... Happy New Year.